Okay, so you are looking at the main breaker of a house here. Now this is our friend's house, and this house is up for sale, and they have it under contract with a buyer. The buyer's home inspector came by and generated this report of stuff that he found. He walked around the outside of the house and the inside, and he found uh, different things that needed to be fixed, and there's a couple of code violations in here. Now if you look at this main breaker box right here, do you see the two main national electric code violations here right off the bat? They may not be obvious to you, especially if, if you don't know much about electronics here, but in today's video, we're going to show you how to identify these types of failures here in your own house and what has to be done to fix them. And it all starts right now. Jeff here and welcome back to the channel where we give you all sorts of world-class tips on how to remodel your houses, your kitchens and your bathrooms and how to do all sorts of engineering failure repairs around your house. And of course today here we have this engineering failure going on. Hey, but if this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you do that right now while it's fresh on your mind. Just click on that subscribe button down below. And when you do that, make sure to click that little gray bell icon that's right next to it. That way you'll be alerted every single time we upload a video because you don't want to miss any of our videos. And if you're not alerted, then you'll miss them. We'll be uploading videos left and right and YouTube will not tell you unless you tell them to tell you by clicking on that gray bell icon. So let's get right into this repair here. Okay, now because of the danger here with all of the high voltage here that we're working next to here, because it's coming right from the power company, I'm going to use some universal precautions. I'm going to be using gloves so that my hands aren't bare and run the risk of touching something metal that might be uh, live. And I'm also going to be using this Volt Alert here from Fluke. This lets us know we can tap it on different wires there and it will tell us, for example, if there's power. So here, see that? That lights up there. So we know there's power in that one there and that one as well. And that's probably our ground, so there's no power there. And I'm also going to be using my insulated screwdrivers. So these are my Milwaukee screwdrivers here. And what these are is, see how they're plastic right here? And only the business end, the tip, is metal. So we're just going to, you know, use these precautions here to keep ourselves safe today. So let's look at what's inside here and what they did that's wrong. Okay, so right off the bat, the first thing we noticed when we opened up this box, there's something gravely wrong here with this box here, folks. Do you see it? The problem is, is it's missing what we call the finger plate. There's supposed to be a big plate here that covers up all of this wiring and all of these exposed electrified metal parts so that you don't get shocked. The only thing that's supposed to be sticking through here is this switch. So let me zoom in on this switch here. See, that's your breaker right there. That's the only thing that's supposed to be sticking through. When you open up this door inside this box here, only that should be sticking through as a, a hole, a square hole that's cut out in the middle of the big gray finger plate there so that's missing so I don't even know if you can get one I mean this place was built in the early 80 I think it's a GE on the outside and so we'll have to see if we can get order one online because you're not going to walk into Home Depot or Lowe's and and find a part for this that's for sure so let's show you, show you how all of this works so this is your power meter here so the power comes in underground and this big pipe here comes up into your box through your your meter and then it goes through these here, this pipe right here, this conduit, and then you see these two big thick cables right there? Those are your 120 volt rails right there, your, your power line. That's your live voltage right there. So the way the power company is giving you the power into your house is these two cables come up, they wrap around the top there, and they go into the top, those two terminals up there on the top of the breaker switch, okay? And then they, go, they flow through the breaker switch and they come out the bottom here, right? And then it goes down the pipe here and into your house to supply you with the power. It goes to your, your main panel that's usually in your kitchen or your hallway there. So this breaker switch right here, if we were to throw this switch, it would shut off all the power to the house, inside the house right now. And so that's the way all of this works. All right, so now I want to direct your attention to the bottom part of this breaker switch here, this unit. 
because I want to focus our attention down here. This is where the inspector flagged the problem here. So you can see right here your two big power cables that are going into your house come out of the bottom of the breaker there, right? And so they're tied in with that terminal there. Well, the problem that the inspector found was, look what somebody came and did later. This is about the dumbest thing you can do in electrical wiring, folks. This is electrical wiring 101. This is a major no-no and, and a possible safety hazard, even though it's more of a nuisance hazard than a safety hazard, but it could be a safety hazard too. So somebody came along here and took these two black wires and said, oh, I got a great idea. We need power. Let's tap off of the power coming into the house there. And this right here is called double tapping. It's a very important phenomenon to keep in mind. That's what we call it in the industry here. It's called double tapping. And it's frowned upon. And probably most inspectors and building inspectors will never allow it anyway. And I'm not sure, I have to go back and check the NEC, the National Electric Code, to see if it's even actually specifically called out in there. But it's certainly frowned upon by Everybody in the industry and anybody with common sense would never do anything like that. That is not the appropriate way to do this. Now keep in mind, there are a few breakers out there in the industry from Square D that allow you to double tap. Not every one of the Square D breakers does that, but there are some that do. And I think there's a couple of other companies too, but not very many have breakers that are specifically designed for double tapping. So you should never do that. So we decided to figure out, well, what's going on here? Why did they double tapped? Who double tapped? What's, what's going on here? Sounds like an episode of Seinfeld. He double tapped. So you get these two blue, black wires here, see? And they go down to this pipe on the lower section there. And it turns out they come down to here, to this little box, this little sub box here. So let's take a close look at this sub box. Okay, so here's the sub box here. And as I take a closer look at this, I know exactly what this is. Do you guys know what this is? It's pretty messy and old and everything. But I'll tell you exactly what this is, folks. This looks like the transformer for your doorbell. And so that says to me that this was probably done by the builder when the builder built this place. And if that's the case, they, hey, the builder should have known better. They should never have done it this way. And first of all, we're in the back of the house. Why is the transformer way in the back of the house. Why? Because the builder got lazy and said, oh, I'm just going to tap off of my main breaker here for that. This transformer should have been up by the front door somewhere, or it should have been, there's a storage closet out in front of the front door. It should have been located in there. And guess what? The doorbell doesn't work anyway. So my friends informed me that when they moved in here 13 years ago, the doorbell wasn't working then. They had some handyman come by that tried to mess around with this, and he couldn't get it to work either. My guess is they probably fried this transformer because if you're going across these two terminals, I'm willing to bet that's 240 volts right there. Okay, so we've got our probes on there now. And let's take a look over here and see what the fluke meter is telling us. So you see, I was right. We got 240 volts on there. Let's get a better angle where we can read it easier here. So we've got 240 volts on there. So my question is, why would you take a doorbell transformer and put it across 240 volts. That, that to me, is, a, is an accident waiting to happen. That, you're just going to fry the transformer, unless it's one of those rare types of transformers that operates off of 240, but I'm willing to bet that that's not really the case. So I have a feeling somebody came in maybe even after the builder and double-tapped it wrong. I, I just don't know. I'm an engineer, so I'm not going to try to guess what somebody with stupid logic did. You, you can't. You can't make logical sense out of stupidity. But one thing we do know is we are going to have to remove this double tap here. So that means we may end up having to loosen both of the fasteners there and pull out those wires and then retighten them back down. But remember, you have to be really, really careful about this. This is why this should only be done by qualified people here. So let me zoom up here and show you what we have to do. We gotta turn off that switch first so that there's no power coming to the bottom side of this. And we'll double check everything to make sure that there's no energy there or anything before we even start to unscrew that. Okay, so I'm gonna test. So here we have power there now, right? That's coming from um, the power company. The ones we care about are these at the bottom here. Anything else along the bottom here. So I'm gonna flip this off here. So now there should be nothing there. See that? There's no energy coming on, on those two now. So it should be safe for us to get in there with our driver there and loosen that up 
and pull the wire out. Let's get some tools out here, see what ratchets and bits we might need to loosen that with. I think we might pick one of these guys here. Okay, so we're just using uh, the hex driver on there on the end of our socket with the extender so that we'll be away from anything. So we're just going straight in with it like that, see? And we're going to use our ratchet here and just loosen that up. And you see how we were able to pull the wire out here? So now we'll just tighten it back down. If you look over here on the left side of the box, you'll see the white neutral wire here is also double tapped. So we have to get rid of that as well. tools back there. Uh, the other problem I saw is there's a huge pile of like dust, dirt, and probably insects and whatnot that's been gathering moisture and it's been causing the bottom of this box to rust. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that out. Say hello to my little friend. Now I'll just throw the switch for the power. And the house has power once more. And we're going to double check the voltage. And we got our 240 volts again back at the two terminals. So we know the house is getting 240 volts going into it. Okay, so I've got good news and I got bad news, okay. The good news is we fixed the double tap. There's no more double tap, no more violations in there now. The bad news is, well, we still don't have the finger plate yet. We're gonna have to try to get online and find a used one or something. Maybe an old supply house has one online because this is a 40 year old box here, okay? The other bad news is we had to disconnect the transformer for the doorbell, which, hey, it didn't work anyway and it hasn't worked in probably 20 years as far as we know. So what I'm going to suggest to my homeowner friends here is that, you know, we forget about this here and we can go up front somewhere and there's a closet, a foyer closet right by the front door. And in there you can probably mount it way up high up on a board where nobody can see it, uh, you know, on the inside of the door opening when you go into the closet. And then from there, you can run wires down the wall to where the doorbell actually in enters into the end of the house there. And that's really the best solution for you. It's the only other thing you can do here because there's no other way. It's really dumb for the builder to have planted this doorbell transformer way on the complete opposite backside of the house when all the action was up front there. See, here's what I mean here. So here's the front door. Here's the doorbell is right here. Now, right inside the doorbell here, and the closet there's a foyer closet right here inside the front door here so anywhere up in here you could you could hide the transformer where nobody would ever notice it like you could put it up there you'd have to tap off of something else some other outlet there is a hall outlet right over here so with some minor cajoling you can tap off of that with romex and cut through the drywall on the other side of this closet here and work it up to the top there and just feed it through the walls. You know, it, it's going to be a day's worth of work and drywall cutting and patching up, but when it's done, it would be perfect. So then you would just feed it right back along the wall here, and wherever the wires come in from the doorbell here is where you would hook it up. See? 
you're finding this video useful so far and I hope it helped you out. And if it did, hey, please give us a thumbs up down below that lets us know that you like us. And then while you're at it, don't forget, click on that subscribe button down below there. And don't forget to click that little gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be alerted every single time we upload a new video because otherwise YouTube will never tell you. We'll be uploading videos and you'll never see it. So anyway, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you on the next one.